Morning, everybody. Am I on? There we go. Lovely to see you. Uh, for those who maybe don't know, my name is Luke. Uh, I'm one of the pastoral staff here. Uh, it's my great joy just to talk up to you a little bit about a question that I have for you. And that is, is there life after Michael Watson? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Only kidding. Uh, I'm hoping if you're part of the TCC family, uh, then I'm hoping that the thing you know is that our curate Michael and his wife Renee are going to be leaving us, God willing, at the end of the year. And they're going to be taking up an opportunity to take the good news of Jesus to the ends of the earth. And uh, this morning we thought it would be good to present them before you as partners of ours as a local church and to share how you can get involved with them as together we serve to know Christ and to make Christ known for the glory of God. That's our heartbeat as a local church and that's how we're doing it. So I'm going to invite Michael and Renee to come up onto the stage with me. I'll stand on this X I'm out the way. Renee was very excited because she gets to stand at the pulpit today. So she's going to go stand over there. Now, I'm assuming that for, for most of us as part of the TCC family, we, we actually don't need to introduce Michael and Renee to you. They've been part of our church for many years. Uh, they were here when Michael was studying at George Whitfield College and have spent the last two years doing his curacy, which is ministry training with us as a local church. So I'm, I'm assuming we've, we know them pretty well, uh, but it might be that you don't actually know what it is that they're going to do. You've heard they're leaving. You've heard they're going somewhere. You're not too sure, though, what they're going to do. So let's ask that question. Just, Michael, tell me what you're going to do. Tell them. Yeah. Thanks, Luke. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, we are going to uh, Zambia to work with uh, Waymakers Mission Africa. Uh, they've got a base established there in Chivuma since uh, 2012. And Renee and I have the privilege of, of uh, being confident that God has called us to go and help and assist the work there in, in Chivuma. Um, so we'll be um, helping in that area in four different ways primarily. Uh, the first uh, priority that I'll be focused on is in teaching pastors, training pastors. Um, we have a vision to have the flood plains of Chavuma saturated with the gospel of Jesus Christ and to be discipled properly. And in order to do that, the pastors, these faces you see on the screen here, uh, they don't have any theological training. And so they go through a three-year program and I'll be part of that uh, 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 process of teaching them to lift up the theological understanding of the pastors so that the people can be well uh, discipled in Chivuma. There are not many churches in Chivuma, but those pastors who are there need training so they can lead their people appropriately. And uh, one of the other ways that we want to, to serve in the kingdom of God there is to train evangelists. And so we will be training uh, uh, local evangelists um, in the use of the heart of man um, uh, posters, and they use this to pr present the gospel of Jesus Christ to their own people across the floodplains, and in this way, people will learn about Jesus um, through their own people, and that's one of our priorities. Also, because people will be hearing about Jesus, we see a priority of having churches planted, so those local evangelists will go into the villages, and we'll teach them in church planting, so they can plant churches in the local villages, and we want to see a, villi a, a village church planted within walking distance of every person who lives on the floodplains so that they can have access to good Bible teaching. Um, and then we will also be serving in mercy ministry. Um, and one of the pr primary ways we do that is to help people get access to clean drinking water uh, and safe drinking water because uh, they normally get water from the rivers which have crocodiles in and the water is not that clean. So by putting in boreholes, we allow them to get safe uh, drinking water. Um, it's a way we can serve and love them. Um, yeah. You know, Michael, when we were chatting, you, 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 know, you reminded me that in much of Africa, the woman's role is to gather the firewood, to cook, and to clean. And you said, I mustn't mention that at all, so we're not going to. Yeah. So we're not going to ask Renee in that sense. I, I mean, I, <laughs> you, you, you are not just going to cook and clean. So you're going for a much bigger role yeah. because you're also going as a missionary and you're also going to serve the Lord in that way. So just tell us a little bit. I, I can feel the daggers <laughs> coming at you. So just, just tell us a little bit about what you're actually going to do. Well, obviously, there will be place for cooking and cleaning and scratching his back and all that kind of thing. And so kicking yes. in the pants. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, I will go as a support to my husband. Um, but also... Um, God has gifted me with and equipped me with um, uh, education and gifts in education to be able to teach uh, and work with young people. And Jesus said, 
Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And um, I think that it's it's important that God has called me to be with Michael there in Chavuma because there is quite a need in the education system in Chavuma. The high schools there, if you look at this little um, girl over here, the chances are that she's never going to go to high school. Um, and the main reason for that is the high schools are in English language. Um, the local primary schools are all in their local languages, which means that for a local uh, child in the rural areas to go to high school, they need to write a competency exam in English. In the capital cities, this is not a problem because they are exposed to a lot of people around them that are speaking English. But in the rural areas, there's, there is no exposure to English. So um, when, a lot of them will never go to high school. Um, so for us, the priority is going to be that when we're in Shavuma, we want to set up a language literacy school, or uh, not a school, but a, a center, a library, community center, where we can run with literacy programs for the primary school children to help them to be able to become competent in English, which means that they will get an opportunity to go to high school, and that will uplift the whole community because the education system is lifted, and it gives them opportunities for jobs and all of that as well in the future. So I think, most importantly, we want to use this as a platform to share the gospel and the love of Jesus to them. We want to build relationships with the families and the children um, and to make sure that they also know about Jesus and know about the love of Jesus and how they can know him more. And that's partly also one of the reasons why one of the things we're keen for, I know Michael didn't mention it now, but you mentioned it at 8 o'clock, is we're keen for Michael to be starting an English-speaking church so that there can be church in English for those as they try and grow in their understanding of English itself. So lots of exciting things happening. Now, now Michael, I mean, I have an idea where you're going, and we, and we kind of joke it's up there, but just, I mean, I mean, where is it that you guys are actually going to be going to do this? Thank you, Luke. Yes, uh, we're going to Zambia, the northwest province of Zambia, town, border town of Chivuma, um, which is right alongside the Zambezi River. And um, our mission base, the Waymaker's mission base, is right on the river. And our little house where we'll be staying is right in the back of uh, that house. And Renee's going to take us on a trip through the house. Yeah, just in case you did not know what it looks like. But uh, we're at the back of the, the building over there. Um, and welcome. Welcome. <laughs> This is our lounge dining room and the kitchen. At the moment, it's still got John and Leslie's stuff there, but they've been moving into the bigger house. Um, and then this is the d bathroom dining um, bathroom dining room, bathroom <laughs> shower. And thankfully, we have a flush toilet, so that is one of those needs taken care of. We also, in our bedroom, have a mosquito net, so that protects us from the dangerous mosquitoes. Um, yeah, that's our home. Yeah, so that's pretty much where, where we'll okay. be, Luke. Yeah. So if I get this straight, so Renee has resigned as a teacher at one of our local high schools. You have officially tendered your resignation as a staff member here at TCC. So how are you guys going to support yourself as you go and do this? Thank you. Thank you for that question, um, Luke. Yeah, as uh, volunteer missionaries, uh, we're going to be totally reliant on the generous gifts of God's people, financial gifts to support us and enable us to pay our monthly bills. Um, you know, we've been going through the, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 has been quite an encouragement to us, and also, you know, the, the exhortation not to worry. But Matthew 6, 33 says, um, uh, um, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be, will be added to you as well. And so that's really the faith step we're taking, is to obey God in this step and trust that God's people will be generous to support us and that God will work in the hearts of people to, to yeah, financially support us. That's, that's pretty much where we're going. We're taking a step in the dark here. Yeah? Neither of us have any salaries tomorrow, uh, tomorrow next year. Um, but what we, what we do commit ourselves to do is to keep um, our friends and family updated with regular newsletters, and you can sign up for that uh, on our little blog website in the contact page. You can sign up for our newsletter, and we'll keep you updated and hopefully remind you that we also need your love and support. Mm. So I guess this is really where we come in as a local church because, you know, some are called to go, but some are called to stay. But those who stay send, and when they send, they support. And that's one of the things we're trying to do quite seriously here. We as a local church are committed 
to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. That's why we started our service uh, the way we did. We want to be witnesses for Jesus here and there and everywhere. That's our heartbeat as a local church. So, so the leadership are fully behind Michael and Renee's call. We're fully supportive of it. But the fact is, we can't do it on our own. So we want to present them to you today as our partners in this mission. This is the way you will reach the people of Chivuma. And so when we talk partnership as a local church, we kind of talk in different categories. Uh, we look for partners who will support by praying. Uh, we look for partners who will support by encouraging and communicating and keeping regularly in contact. And of course, we look for partners who will support financially. Uh, that is people who will, over and above what they're giving to gospel work already, uh, it's no good just redirecting funds so we, we take away from others, but that we sacrificially give to support gospel work going to the ends of the earth. And so today we're asking you as a local church, will you consider partnering Michael and Renee in one or more of those ways? Uh, maybe to sign up for their newsletter so you keep up to date. Maybe to sign up as a supporter who will pray regularly and faithfully for them. But maybe you're in a position that you can sacrificially give for gospel work. Uh, the way we tend to operate here at TCC is every partner that we take on gets a partner coordinator and I'm looking for her, but I can't see her. There she at the back. She, she moved from the 8 o'clock service, you see. So Wendy Wyatt is Michael and Renee's partner coordinator. Uh, she will be able to answer questions that you might have. Uh, she will be the point of contact person once Michael and Renee have gone up to Chivuma. I mean, obviously, Michael and Renee for the next couple of weeks can answer your questions. I'm happy to answer questions, but certainly Wendy will be the point person. And at the end of the service, if you go to Wendy, she will give you one of these flyers. Uh, and you could sign up to either pray for them, to encourage them, or to support them financially. You obviously don't have to do that today. Uh, go and pray about that, reflect on it. But if you could bring it back to us in the next couple of weeks, it would be really helpful. See, this is one of the ways that together we serve to know Christ and to make Christ known for the glory of God. This is what partnership is about. And we're thrilled if you could sign up and help them. Uh, just so you know, Michael and Renee are not, not our only partners. If you're not sure who the others are, uh, there's a notice board out in the foyer and you can find details on the others as well. I'm going to pray for Michael and Renee and then we'll, we'll pray together. Father, we thank you that you are the Lord of the harvest and we thank you that you raise up men and women for gospel work. So we thank you for the call that you've put on Michael and Renee. We thank you for their obedience to that call. And we pray, Lord, that as they are faithful in obedience, that so we as a local church, as a kingdom people, would be faithful in gospel support. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.